Kia ora talofa lava, bola vanaka, greetings to you all. Welcome back. It's uh, Pale in the Fale with Graham, and uh, we're here to talk about Fono Fale, a model of Pacific health. So, Pale, welcome back, and I just, I'll just hand straight over to you. Can you tell us what the Fono Fale model is? And I guess there's a second question there in my mind. You know, as a, as a tutor or an educator working with learners, how can I use it? How can I put it into practice? What's what's the application of this for me? So, what is it? How can I use it? Over to you, my friend. Fono Fale is a model that was set up really by Carl Pulotu Enderman's mum years ago and it was a model to try and engage with Pacific Island communities particularly in health. So the Fono Fale model, the two words Fono mean to meet and Fale means house. So it's like a meeting house or meeting place for ideas and approaches to better serve um, Pacific communities. Whilst it's predominantly Samoan in the way it's set up, it's interchangeable with all the Pacific groups. It's in the shape of a house or a Pacific Island fale with the uh, matted roof and it has four pillars and then it has a floor and each one of those is symbolic of they symbolize different parts of the Pacific community. So starting with the foundation of the fale, that's really the family is the foundation for the fale. The poles that hold up the roof are made up of the physical pole, the spiritual the mental and then the fourth one is just other so it might be things around gender or it might be other things connected to the family which uphold the ceiling so the roof itself is just culture so the funafale is in those three stages the family being the foundation the four different poles and then which are made up of physical spiritual mental and other and then the, the roof is the culture so um hold that thought for a minute that hold fale is also embedded behind a circle of things related to time, environment, and context. So it's a great model because it can be uh, utilized in, in any time or any environment or any context. And that's what makes it a living model, if you like. If we think about all the other groups like Cook Island, they have a model called Tiwaiwa. Tongans have a, mo a model called Kilala. There is a model that's generic around Alay. Samoans had one years ago called the Long Me model or the Turtle model. It's been rejuvenated in the last two or three years in education and each of those models of course can be used in a different context but the formal valley model covers all of the island groups as well so the question how can this be used in terms of your approaches if we remove the word model and we place approach in there it makes it easier to access so we know that when we want to engage with any pacific family any pacific community the family is a good place to start so when you begin to engage with the family using this model you know that those four poles that hold up the culture, if you like, are going to mean that each one of those poles has to be sacredly, if you like, approached. So you can't have culture without physical, you can't have culture without the spiritual, you can't have culture without the mental, and you can't have culture without considering things like gender. There is a new, if you like, um, approach to the gender issue around the LGBTQI uh, or rainbow community. A lot of our young people, for example, are really engaged in that now and making it visible or making you know their choice of uh, sexual orientation more mainstream. And so this model can be used to embrace our younger generation or our New Zealand born or those that have a sexual orientation that's different from just being heterosexual. By making these approaches uh, through those pools means that our cultures get safe. So the values come out of those cultures, of course, and we've spoken about the values before, that each individual island group has values that are quite different um, and they're interchangeable. So when you start to pull all of these approaches together, the key here is, is it the right time to do it? Is it the right context? And is it the right environment? So for example, you wouldn't embrace the LGBTQI rainbow community in a context where there's a church that preaching against having that sexual orientation. So once again, you would use this model to circumnavigate your approach because there's a spiritual part of that too that's quite important. I think the thing about modules also is 
and I experienced this last week when I was talking about the Fauna Fale model in Hawke's Bay, for example. One of the things about context that um, became really important was in a place like Hawke's Bay, where it's very rural, they were speaking to me about things around spirituality, for example, that was quite embedded in traditional church thinking. In Auckland, of course, you've got all these Christian life churches, and they're not in our spoken languages, they're in English. And so when we're contextualizing the faunal fale model, it's really important that you do it for all those areas, the, the pools, not just the one, because, you know, a house that's only got two pools in the middle fall over. Um, so again, yeah, well, so that was brought clear to me last week as we were discussing that.